Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I am here with a video for the Newton's Nook Designs 3 Year Celebration Blog Hop. And I definitely recommend that you check out the links in the video description below to the blog hop so that you can check out some of the amazing designers. We have some special guests including Sandy Alnock and Christina Warner, which is amazing because I just completely admire them. I learn so much from them and their channels. So, um, you know, it's excited to be involved in a hop with them. So be sure to check out what they are doing with the new projects or so the new products from Newton's Nook Designs. So for today's card, I'm using a die from the last release. It was part of the Garden Starter set, and it's the, um, the die creates, uh, cuts out the little seed packet from the stamp set, but also it cuts out a rectangle in the center of your cardstock with some stitching detail around the edge. And I wanted to find a fun way to use that. So what I did was I, um, I cut the die out and I have that stitch rectangle area and I basically am going to put a piece of colored cardstock underneath it and then kind of take advantage of that little stitch detail because I'll lay that over and um, add some elements to it. So it might not seem obvious at first, like why is the stitching on the outside of what you're cutting, but basically it's allowing you to create a frame for your card. And so the piece of cardstock that I'm putting the ink on is a little bit smaller than the piece of cardstock that the frame is cut out of, so that way it won't see over the edges and I can kind of just center it down. One of the advantages of putting the frame over your inked panel is you don't have to worry so much about the edges of your inked panel. I have a little bit of trouble sometimes getting my distress inks to look perfectly blended. Every once in a while I wind up with like a big splotch of ink somewhere, especially on the edges because you come you bring it to the card and there's too much and now your edge is really really dark and you wanted your center to be light. I don't know if you guys have those same problems sometimes with the ink. But since you're not going to see my edges, I can um, be a little bit more relaxed about that. I do know that Laura Basson's suggestion is always kind of like, oh, tap it off to the side and get some of, you know, get rid of some of the ink. But then I find, well, sometimes there's not enough ink left. And I don't know, I love distress ink, but um, even after years of using it, sometimes I kind of feel like a novice. I'm like, why can't I get this effect that I want? But, you know, it just takes time and practice and patience. So you see there on the left, I have that like big circle blob. And now I've got to try to blend it out. Um, but with, an, you know, again, ink blending is a patience thing. And we don't always all have the patience, but um, it's definitely worth it in the end. I find I had that uh, same kind of problem with my watercolor earlier this week. You know, I always want to dry it with the heat gun and get going. But, you know, sometimes taking your time, letting your watercolor air dry, building your ink layer slowly, it winds up, you know, working out a lot better. So the three colors that I'm using here are the Twisted Citron, Wilted Violet, and Picked Raspberry. And it might seem a little odd blending that purple into the green, especially because you can create brown if you blend them too much, but I kind of just barely let them touch each other and let it be a sort of soft, uh, more white area in between them. Because if you put the ink too much together, again, it's definitely going to create a brown look there. But I wanted something really fun and bright to match up with this summer card. And I stamped the dog from the Dog Days of Summer, which is part of the Newton's Nook Designs July release. And I'm going to be coloring him with some Copics. I also stamped a sentiment from the stamp set. And I used the banner die, which comes with that garden starter die I used earlier, the rectangle. And I uh, just kind of cut a little banner shape that I'm going to add on with my sentiment at the end. So to get started with the Copic coloring, I'm laying down an overall base of the E33. There are some spots naturally in this dog, which I kind of like because um, I'm not as good with learning, uh, sorry, with, um, you know, kind of adding in my own spots and stuff as something I'm still working on or adding in texture and fur and stripes to my animals. But I did take Sandy Alnock's Copic Jumpstart class, and that helped a lot. So I really recommend that. And like I said, she is part of this blog hop. So when you go on over there, be sure to check out that. She is an amazing teacher. And so I have started by laying that base, and then I'm going to add some shading 
and um, build that all up and then worry about the spotted layer. So I know that they, I want them all to be different colors, but I'm basically just going to work on one area of the dog at a time. For the top and bottom, I am going to be using some like a more traditional like E33 plus 35 plus 37, you know, when you um, just use the markers at like two apart. But then in the center, um, to get some different browns, I'm going to be a little bit more creative with my color combinations and choose like an E, you know, 33 into an E57 or something like that. And I found that a lot of times you can, you know, mix up your colors and use what you had, especially with the browns. I feel like you don't have to have the ones that are right next to each other um, in the Copic numbering system in order to get great blends. And that's another thing that's covered by that really awesome class from Sandy Alna. Once I had the shading on that first part, I'm going to continue to add shading on the stripe. And so they look like two different colors of brown. But for the shading, I basically added shading to the top of the dog and the bottom of the dog, partly so that it gets a look of being rounded because um, when something is lighter, it comes to the forefront a little bit more. And so um, it kind of creates like a bit of a highlight and it makes the, you know, gives some shape and dimension to the puppy dog here. And also the shadows that would be cast from the ground. However, I'm going to fussy cut this out and um, put it on the card. And it's not going to be part of a big elaborate scene. So you wouldn't have as much to worry about in terms of shadows on the ground and that sort of thing. I'm keeping the coloring relatively simple in this instance. If you wanted to add a little bit of texture to the dog, one suggestion would be like at this point when you don't have any extra color, like before you color the collar, um, take a cloth and a little bit of the, um, what's it called? The Copic Various Ink Colorless Blender and um, put it on a cloth and then tap it over the animal. And that's like a really quick and easy way to give a little bit of texture. I'm going to kind of try to tie in some of the colors from the panel and so I'm adding a little bit of purple to his collar just like I added pink to the ice cream and then finish it off with a W7 nose there. Once I had that colored, like I said before, I fussy cut it out. I like to use the EK Success non-stick trimmer or scissors. Um, they work really well for fine detail areas and then even if you have adhesive on the back of your image already, you don't have to worry about that. I am adding the frame over the inked area and behind the inked panel I added a whole bunch of foam tape. I could not find my foam sheets at the time so I just kind of went to town on the foam tape because I do want it to be able to mail really well. I do try to mail out a good number of my cards and I wanted to have a little bit of dimension because I'm going to put this white frame on a white card base and so if I pop it up a little bit with foam tape it just adds a little bit of extra interest and creates a natural shadow. However, if you don't want to use foam tape, something you can do is cut the card panel a little bit smaller and take something like a C00 or a W00, like a really light gray Copic marker, and trace around your card panel onto your card base. And it looks like there's a shadow and dimension there, but really it's a flat card and a little bit easier for mailing. Although, you know, usually uh, just a one sheet of foam tape is uh, okay in the mail. So that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Check out the links in the video description below to follow along with the blog hop and to um, follow me on social media if you're interested. And um, especially check out the Critter Loving Card Makers group if you're not already part of it because if you love Newton's Nook, you are sure to love critters. Thanks for watching. Bye.